So you're going to want to lay out all of your colors on the white side of a piece of mat board or you can always lay tin foil over it. You can also lay tin foil over a plate and use that. Just something so that you can see your colors very well. Um, there are certain uh, colors that you're going to want to mix up and have probably some of which is purple. So if I take a little bit of my red and a little bit of my blue and mix it, I'm going to make a really dark, dark, dark purple which can be really great for darker areas. If I want to lighten that up a little bit, if I just add a tiny little bit of white to it, it will lighten. If I want to lighten it quite a bit, I can add a lot of white to it. And I can, this can be really good for some darker areas in something like a white. So I'm going to be painting a white flower, so I'm going to probably need quite a bit of that. So you can, if you used a grid to draw out, I would get rid of your grid lines um, once you know that your outlines are accurate. Now it would start to chunk in some of your darker areas throughout your flower or at least the area that you want to work on at that moment. So I'm chunking in the values that I see. And I'm using purple and I mixed up a purple, but I'm also going to be using some blues and some reds and some oranges and some yellows in this area. So I'm laying those in. And I'm comparing the picture. I'm looking for just like the darker areas that I see in there. Adding a little bit of color. And it, the thing is, you want to think about color as value. So yellow is your one of your lightest colors. If you add white to anything, it can be a very light color. So I can have purple being a very light color, even though you normally think of it as a dark color. When you want to change your colors, remember to wipe your brush off and you can clean it by washing it off in the water or if you're using regular oil paints, you would use some type of solvent, but I'm using water soluble right now. So I'm dipping it in water and I'm laying in white now and I'm laying it next to it. And this is so that I can work quickly. If you cover an entire area and then try to add white over it, you're not going to be able to keep those really white whites. So I'm laying in white next to these darker areas that I'll then be able to blend with a clean, dry brush. So I'm wiping my brush off. And I'm going to start to blend with that brush, continuously wiping the excess paint off with the paper towel so that you don't push too much of the darker paint into the lighter paint. Sometimes you might want to do that if you want to turn an area a little bit darker, but you have to make sure that you are wiping your brush enough that the areas that you want to stay white will stay white as you brush them together. So again, a clean dry brush between the two different colors will blend them together. And the thing about color is like I can look for, I want to add yellows to my light areas. I want to add oranges. I want to add different colors for value. It will add a lot of interest. So it doesn't have to stay completely local color, like exactly the color that I see in real life. The great thing about painting is I can make it more interesting and more beautiful than it even is in real life. Plus the way that color works and the way that light works, sometimes things take on slight little bits of orange or yellow or red or purple because of the lighting. And sometimes when we exaggerate them in a painting, it can make the painting uh, very beautiful. So don't be afraid of color and use color to your advantage. 
thinking about the values. I can make any color lighter by adding white to it. So sometimes I'm going to bring in, add white and add it into a lighter area. In the background, you're not going to want to just use green straight from the tube. And Right now I'm mixing up some orange. I'm using red and yellow to mix orange and I'm laying that back there. The orange really helps to kind of make a brighter background, but it also will desaturate the intensity of the green a little bit. So they kind of work together to do that. It is always better to mix colors than to use colors straight from the tube. Even though you're blending the colors together, you have to be really careful, um, especially with colors from a tube like a green. It's going to kind of look like a sickening green if it's just straight from the tube. So make sure to mix in yellows and blues. And sometimes just a little hint of orange maybe kind of brushed across the top to kind of tone it down a little bit, um, but that orange can also have like kind of a lightning effect. Ochre is also a good color to uh, bring into your greens and your yellows. If I want to make a brown, I'm going to be mixing any two complementary colors together. I can also add just a little bit of any complementary color to another color to make that color appear a little bit darker. That's important. If I want to make my purple a little bit darker and I add a little bit of yellow to it, it'll make it darker. If I want to make green just a little bit darker, I can add a little bit of red. I'm using a dry brush to kind of blend these together and lay these in in the background. 